All right. I was going to go and do my normal material tonight, but now I don't think I am because I've had an interesting week. So I'm just going to tell you guys about that. This is my little friend, just so you know. <laughs> oh, right. uh, so, I know you guys are looking at me and you're thinking that I'm perfect, and I do that a lot too. But uh, well, you guys can't see me. That's a shame. Let's move this guy back. How you doing? So, but uh, I actually have a flaw. It's true. I know it's weird. It's okay. I had to have a couple of teeth pulled this week. I know, it was horrible. Like, uh, and I'm the type of person where I don't have insurance. <laughs> so, so I'll put it off, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's not that I do crack or anything, it's that I'm poor, that's why I have bad teeth. And no insurance, those things equal together is weird. Uh, but, uh, so, like it started hurting on Monday, it wasn't too bad. But by Wednesday, it was like somebody was stabbing me in the face with an ice pick. It was horrible. Like, I couldn't sleep, because for some odd reason, if somebody's stabbing you in the face with an ice pick, it doesn't make you tired. I don't think. <laughs> Not at all. Like, I was just sitting up going, God, I wish I was tired. This is horrible. And by Thursday, like, after like 36 hours with no sleep, I actually, and believe me, I'm a devout atheist, I was actually about to pray. <laughs> What's what? <laughs> what? What'd you say? I said, come on, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's what I said. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I will turn it around. I will rewrite all my atheist jokes, give big props to Jesus. If he'll just give me 20 minutes without pain, and I can go to sleep. <laughs> and he did not. <laughs> So uh, I, I, I reverted back to logic, and I decided I'm going to go see a dentist. <laughs> because they work better than Jesus, I guess. I don't know. So uh, I, got up, or I, I got out at 8 o'clock on Thursday morning. I walked to the dentist by my house. Those guys were closed on Thursday. It was, it was weird. Like, why Thursday? That's such a weird day to close. So like, you know what? Screw the weekend. Thursday's our day off. I don't really care. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I went in there, and uh, I'm the type of person that I will still come to work if I'm in pain, because I grew up in a time where guys could not show pain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Like, like I... <laughs> you, know, you obviously grew up in, like, uh, what's it? Oh, no, that's funny. He looks about 30. Are you, very much. are you about 30? Yeah, yeah see? About. So, what's about. the problem? About, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, because like, uh, whenever I was a kid, we couldn't sue our parents. It was weird. I, my dad was telling me about some uh, people. He's like, oh yeah, this, this kid, they're suing their parents because, I don't know, they wouldn't let them eat ice cream or something. And I was like, why couldn't I do that? And he's like, because I would have killed you. <laughs> That's right. that easy. <laughs> I used to ask my parents if I could eat ice cream for, for breakfast, and they said no, because when I'm under their roof, I live by their rules. So ever since my 18th birthday, I get up every morning, fix me a big bowl of triple fudge brownie ice cream, which probably doesn't help with the whole teeth thing. And I call up my mom, and I'm like, guess what, I'm eating ice cream, because I'm under my roof, what? That's right, she, she hates that too, but she can't do nothing, what can she do in my house? And if they come over, they're eating ice cream for breakfast. My rules. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, so I had them pulled. That was fun. The, the, while I was there, the dentist asked me if I wanted to keep them. Did, is that a normal thing? Do people, I'm like, is the tooth fairy real? Why would I want to keep these things? It's, oh, that's crazy. Uh, so, what's what? I hear people talking. We're conversating about you. It's cool. Oh, what? Oh, we're yeah. conversating about you. Oh, okay, what'd you say about me? We're saying we'll keep some. And then I said my dad. He kept it. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're sick. Excellent. We should give the audience a mic. I can barely hear them. <laughs> so we had a, a comic up earlier. She said she was an environmentalist. I like environmentalists. I myself an environmentalist. The, the problem with... Uh, 
with going green, like, like anything really in life, is it's really suited for either the really poor or the really rich. People like us in the middle class, we get screwed on everything, you know? Because going green is expensive, I can't lie. Or, like if I don't pay my electric bill, that would be green as hell. <laughs> you know, if I was homeless people are the greenest people out there. I, can, I mean, I give big props, they're probably keeping us on that edge of just massive flooding. Really, I mean, they recycle more than anybody. Like, like we have recycling bins at my apartment complex. I don't even use them. I just put them in the bus stop. Just help somebody else out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, yeah, so I like to go green. What I do is I do not own a car. I know. People tell me, William, you don't have a car because you can't afford one. I say that is merely a coincidence. <laughs> If I could afford one, I probably wouldn't have one. Probably, I don't know. It's hard to say. But uh, Chevrolet and a couple other places are coming out with green or electric cars this year. That's fun. The Leaf. I, I still wouldn't know that because I want to be. Oh, I drive a Leaf. Yay! So if I I got a green car, I'd probably get the Tesla. The Tesla. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, it's a sports green car, which is sick, and it sounds fun. Which also means it's expensive, so there you go once again, not driving. So what I do, is I take the bus in L.A. I know, that's, that's horrible. People have told me that it's impossible to take the bus in L.A. It's not impossible. It sucks. <laughs> it's not impossible. And really, taking the bus isn't the, the sucky part. It's waiting for the bus that sucks. I don't even know why they have schedules. I think they have schedules just to fuck with me. I can't. I'll be standing out there for hours, like, holy, I was at a bus stop one day, there was three buses, all of them said they were out of service. I'm like, one of you guys gotta be in service. You know what I'm saying? I show up, if somebody doesn't show up here, like if one of my servers don't show up, by the way, I'm the manager. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I had real music when I came on, not the old timey music. Uh, if one of them doesn't show up, I can't tell, oh, I'm sorry, your server's in here yet. You guys are gonna have to wait an hour. No, we get somebody else to do it. That's how the real world works. Makes me mad. Makes me crazy. Uh, the bus is fun though. You get to meet interesting people. Like, uh, there are bus token dealers out there. I don't know if anybody rides the bus, but you'll meet these people. You'll be, you'll be standing at a bus stop like, here's me, waiting to go to work. <laughs> and he'll come strolling by. And, and, and I think they think that they're actual drug dealers, because they like, kind of circle around. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> It's like, yes, because it's cheaper and I'm poor. But that's, I always wonder, like, what, you know, because if you're a drug dealer, they say, like, marijuana is the gateway drug. Did this guy start out, like, giving out Chuck E. Cheese tokens and move up? I mean, where, where do they start out for that? I don't, I don't get it. Also, I don't, the buses raised a fare, and these guys, they didn't raise their prices at all, so big props for them. I mean, I don't know where they're getting their tokens, but I like it. Uh, also, uh, you get to meet imaginary people on the bus. That's always a good time. There's always at least one on the bus. And they're always arguing with some guy. I don't know why, why these imaginary people are always so mean. Like, you never see somebody having a nice conversation with an imaginary person. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. What I like to do, I like to stand up for the, the real person that's having the argument because I don't think imaginary people should be pushing people around like that. Yeah. I'll go right over to that imaginary person, I'll be like, excuse me, you need to get off the bus. And I will push him out of a window while we're driving. That's right. It really freaks the homeless guy out. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going He's like, does other people see this now? Maybe I'm not crazy. <laughs> so, uh, I'm single. And people sometimes tell me, Will, you're single because you ride a bus. And I say, yes, that's it. <laughs> no coincidence there. Uh, but, you know, it, it'd be kind of hard to date on the bus because 
First of all, you get all these birthdays and anniversaries and bus schedules. I can't remember all those numbers. I'm just going to tell you right now. I don't know if 224 is her birthday or the bus I got to get on or the time I got to catch it. It's just too much. Uh, yeah. And uh, plus, say I ask a girl out. She's like, yeah, pick me up at Thursday at 8. I'm like, well, it's going to have to be about 7.36. <laughs> Probably get there about 8.10, though. <laughs> Plus, say I'm going out with a girl, and she gets drunk one night, calls me up for one of the late night booty calls. She's like, hey, Will, I'm drunk, come on over. I'll be like, okay, it's two. I should be there by seven. <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> Are you still going to be drunk, or should I bring something with me? I don't, I don't know how this works. Uh, airplanes, they get all the fun. Because airplanes, they have the Mile High Club. What's on the bus? The Mile Low Club? I don't, I don't know what it would be. I've been trying to come up with a name for that club, and once I do, I will ask somebody to join it. Anybody have a good name? Six Feet Under. Six Feet Under, that's... It's more like death. I don't really know how to. But I mean, thanks for participating. You want to join the Six Feet Under Club? That's. Yeah, see, that, that won't work. No, no, I really don't. Backseat booty call. I used to. I used to say you want to join the Metrosexual Club. Go Metro. But, Somebody told me what metro sexuality was all about, and I was like, oh, that's way off. That's weird. Mine fits better, though. Really, metrosexual is better than what it really stands for. Well, not gay, but wanting to look gay so you can get laid. That's what it, that's what it stands for. So, so I should be able to call mine the metrosexual club, and then we can call metrosexual people, like, Homophonies. Because that would make more sense. And uh, let's see, what can I leave you guys on? Gay. Gay. Uh, a little awkward, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't know if I have a joke for that. Let's see, I will leave you guys with this. I'm gonna need Mo Green just to go green. <laughs> hey look, a big laugh, thank you guys.